let's face it. For those who jumped onto the electric car bandwagon early, and I'm talking eight to ten years or more ago, the subject of rapid charging their car's battery wasn't probably quite as important a part of their purchase decision as it might be for someone buying an electric car today. For those early adopters, range and practicality were certainly up there, along with the ease of use, the instant torque and smooth acceleration, as well as the fact that you could fuel it at home, which of course gave the owner independence from foreign oil. Plus, for some, the nerdy joy that came from having a car that ran entirely on electrons. And yes, I speak as one of those early adopters myself, having purchased my first electric car way back in 2007. Yeah, don't laugh, I love that little thing, and I did some crazy stuff with it, like increasing its top speed from 30 miles per hour to nearly 60 with a simple battery swap. No, don't ask. Yet, as electric cars have become more and more mainstream, the speed at which we can refuel them has become far more important to mainstream buyers. And that's a logical thing, because as electric vehicles become less a niche market thing and more suitable for mainstream buyers, well, the expectations of what that car could and should do have naturally changed. And being able to refuel quickly is one of them. Frankly, if you're going from fossil fuels to an electric car and you're used to your fill-up taking just a few minutes, waiting even half an hour for a fast charge can frankly seem like an eternity. I know, I know, I know. The majority of electric car owners who have access to overnight charging find that their cars can meet all of their daily driving needs on one single overnight charge. And while the actual time it takes a car to charge up at home can be anywhere from 4 to 10, 12 hours or more, the actual time it takes to plug in your vehicle is about 10 seconds. And if you have home charging or you have access to a nearby public charging station, you probably only need to access a rapid charger once in a blue moon when you need to make those longer distance road trips. But the reality is that while the majority of electric cars don't actually need daily rapid charging, the subject of how to refuel your car quickly on the road is a big concern for new electric car owners. And car companies know this. It's no surprise then that Tesla's supercharger network is one of the biggest reasons that people buy a Tesla over other electric cars. Not only is Tesla's supercharger network the most comprehensive charging network anywhere in the world, it's also one of the simplest to use and the most powerful, dramatically slashing charge times compared to some other electric cars out there. Sure, people choose Tesla for other reasons too. For first timers knowing where to fuel and how to fuel though, well, Tesla has that one sewn up. And because Tesla is Tesla, it hasn't rested on its corporate laurels, pushing the boundaries for ever faster charging, slashing times to refuel on the road to a fraction of what they were a decade ago. Even Tesla's supercharger network isn't fast enough for some, however, and in the last few years, we've seen the auto industry work on bringing ultra rapid fast charging to market. We've seen the birth of 800 volt charging stations for cars like the Porsche Taycan and upcoming models like the Audi e-tron RS and the GMC Hummer EV. And around the world, we've heard whispers of electric vehicle batteries that can recharge from empty to full in less than 15 minutes using super advanced technologies, just like those employed by Israeli firm Stordot and in the US, companies like Atlas Electric Vehicles, who is who we're turning to for today's video. The fact that Atlas has been promising us a new rapid charging electric vehicle in the form of its Atlas XT pickup truck for a number of years. And today we saw a demonstration of that battery technology. Atlas hasn't really been in the spotlight all that much, yet it has been quietly working on its goal of producing affordable, all electric work trucks for people for whom sitting around and waiting for half an hour or more to recharge just isn't practical because they're either paid by the hour or they're completely self-employed. Unlike most electric automakers out there, Atlas has chosen a crowdfunding platform as its preferred way of raising money and right now it isn't interested in a reverse merger or an IPO. And in the last few months we've seen the company produce a series of YouTube videos talking about what I believe the company views as its USP, a new battery cell design and battery charging system that, as I've already said, can fully recharge a battery pack in just 15 minutes. 
Sure, the Atlas XT pickup truck and the XP platform it's based on offer a lot more, at least on paper, like an impressive towing and load carrying capability, up to 500 miles, 804 kilometres of range per charge, and a fully air sprung suspension system. But it's the rapid charging capabilities that have really grabbed people's attention. After all, there's a big reserve button there for you to order your own truck, as well as a way for you to invest in the company. Yet, as this most recent video from Atlas showcases, the average customer who looks at Atlas, and maybe even the average motoring journalist, might start to have doubts about the company. Don't get me wrong, Atlas has showcased both its chassis and a vehicle before, but a single take video posted earlier today entitled Atlas Battery Test shows a battery technology which feels like it's not quite ready for prime time, despite being quite exciting from a technical point of view. To Atlas's credit, unlike many automakers out there, it is being very forthright with its audience about its progress, posting honest, realistic updates on its vehicles every week on its YouTube channel. But while many people say electric vehicle charging isn't rocket science, it is actually quite as complicated as getting a spaceship into orbit. But unlike a SpaceX launch, which people can appreciate regardless of their technical knowledge, today's YouTube video from Atlas is one that frankly doesn't deliver. It tries to take something complicated like battery cell development and distills it into the thing that consumers want to know about, the amount of time it takes to charge. But it's presented in a way that is very hard to appreciate. And like Tesla's battery day, it's likely to leave people feeling a little underwhelmed. And for those who know, it does gloss over important facts that allow those who are technically minded to have actually evaluate what's really going on. In it, Mark Hanschett, founder of Atlas Motor Vehicles, carries out a real-time comparison between one of Atlas's prototype battery cells and a standard electric vehicle battery cell as used by many automakers. Both are tied to their own respective battery management systems and charging circuitry, and we watch as both batteries charge according to manufacturer specifications to see which one reaches full first. Of course, Atlas's prototype cell wins by a long shot, charging from empty to full in just 8 minutes, 55 seconds, at which point the standard battery cell has only reached 19% state of charge from empty. While the specifics of this weren't discussed, we do know from a previous Atlas livestream, held before Tesla's battery day, that part of Atlas's special source is a new battery cell design that uses a Z-fold construction. Instead of pulling power all the way through the cell during a charge or discharge event, this Z-fold design transfers power out of the cell at the edges, which reduces thermal stresses on the pack and allows charge to take the shortest possible route in or out of the battery. I'm not really doing a very good job explaining it here, but just like Tesla's new Tablas 4680 cells, it allows for more power transfer and less internal resistances within the cell. And that means a far more robust cell that's easier to transfer power with, and one which has a more uniform battery temperature throughout. The demonstration today, though, didn't really show anything other than total speed. This industry standard cell, I couldn't tell from the video if we're talking pouch, prismatic or cylindrical, didn't have any cooling system attached and it only had a battery management system attached. It was running against Atlas's own cell, which was hidden inside a very DIY looking enclosure with a heat exchanger and full thermal management system keeping it at what I would presume would be the optimum temperature that Atlas had previously outlined in another video. And no, we couldn't see the cell itself because it was inside that said box of tricks. There was no mention of the specific battery capacity either of each cell, and to be a fair test, I would hope that they were the same, so I'll assume they were. This missing data, though, left me a little cold, like watching a science lecture and not being told exactly what each experiment was showing or what the units of measurements were. Speed is certainly an observable thing, but in this case, if you don't know the other variables, it's a moot point. Granted, Atlas, just like Tesla or every other automaker out there working on new, exciting cell chemistries, wants to keep its IP close to its corporate chest. But if there was so little to show, why bother demonstrating it? 
It wasn't helped either by the fact that Mark Hanshin noted near the end of the video that Atlas was working on commercializing the battery for production vehicle use. And that, frankly, feels like a kicker. It suggests that while Atlas may have a battery pack design that offers far faster charging than anyone else in the industry, it's still very much at a theoretical or test phase, and they've gone a long way to get to a point where they're commercially viable. For a company that's offering reservations, I'm going to be honest, that's concerning. At this point, of course, it would be perfectly applicable to argue that, wait, GMC is currently accepting reservations for the Hummer EV, and that's a vehicle that's not even been finished yet. And you would be right, but the difference here is that one of the companies is an established brand owned by an automaker with plenty of money and engineers to throw at the problem. Hopefully it will. The other is a startup with less resources and money that's still crowdfunding for its future. But just like Tesla's battery day left people confused over what exactly Tesla is working on and what it has in production and what it has in prototype testing, this presentation from Atlas is likely to be received in a similar way. If I read between the lines, Atlas does have some form of prototype or design mock-up for its vehicle. It also has battery packs undergoing testing. It appears to have solved some of the issues regarding battery thermal management, ensuring as small a thermal delta between different parts of the battery pack and individual cells as possible. It also appears to have solved some of the issues related to traditional battery pack design, like keeping the I2R losses low through its new Z-fold cell design, with the ability to pull power out of both sides of the battery, which in turn keeps battery temperatures stable, minimises structural deformations at the microscopic level, and reduces the risks of premature battery ageing. If you heard all of what I just said and your face glazed over, well, you wouldn't be alone. Listening to Mark Hanschett talk about Atlas's charging technology and cell design, those who are technically minded may very well see some potential in what they hear. But for the rest of the world, listening to this battery technology being explained is at best confusing and at worst, totally overwhelming. It is, to all intents and purposes, as obscure to most people as rocket science is. Every little development that SpaceX makes in its rocket design is thrilling to those who understand the field and the science that goes into making things go into low Earth orbit or beyond. But for everybody else, the thing that they're really there to see is SpaceX's reusable boosters returning to, of course, I still love you. In the EV world, every little battery advancement will excite those who really understand it. They excite me. Today's demonstration, had it included some more data, would have been truly monumental. But in trying to dumb it down and showing something that the average user may not really care about, Atlas risks alienating would-be users. The real demo? Well, that'd be showing someone pulling up at Atlas's proprietary chargers. Yes, I do think it's proprietary based on the charge inlet design we see on the company's website. Plug in and fill the car in less time than it takes to run inside, and grab a coffee, a Danish, and maybe visit the loo. I hope we see that soon, because while rocket science is cool, most buyers don't get it or even care. Technical demonstrations are fun if you're into them, but they won't sell cars, or in this case, trucks. Let's hope Atlas has the ability to put this theory into practice soon. And if it can't, well... That might tell us more about the company and its readiness for market than we've known to this point. And that's it for today's video. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. My special thanks to our $50 a month patrons, John Lyons, Regine Fellows, Jeffrey Songster and Tesla in the Gong, and our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Sean Ueda, Will Graylin, and Ian. You can join all of these amazing Patreon supporters by following the links below, or you can send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. You'll also find a link to our free Discord server, so sign up, come and join in the chat, and meet the rest of the team. And if you're in need to check out some swag, do look at our Redbubble store. The holiday season is nearly upon us, and it is a good time to order your TE swag for your family members, all while supporting the channel as well. After the names are finished scrolling, you'll see a suggestion for a new video to watch, 
as long as we remember to put it up. So please consider watching it if you haven't, and I will be back very soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving! Bye.